Did you inherit $1 million from your grandparent, or are you about to become wealthy from someone else's hard work? If you say yes to these questions, this show is not for you. You, the hardworking, committed, and ambitious professional who have a 9-to-5 corporate job or a 12-hour shift worker keeping the assembly line running. Perhaps you run your gig as a freelancer, or maybe you run a small business. You are in the right place. Welcome to the Career Evangelist Podcast, where you get your weekly tips, ideas, strategies, and inspiration to find purpose in what you do so you can build a career you are passionate about and live a fulfilled life. Here is your host, Bola Alabi. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Career Evangelist podcast. I'm excited today because I have a special guest with us. I have a career coach uh, joining us today on this show. You guys know already that our goal is to continue to support you and help you so that you can find a career that you will find satisfaction in, make lots of money and continue to grow. And that's why anytime that I have uh, career experts like today, I'm excited because I know a lot of you will have questions and I'm here to ask those questions. Without further ado, I'm going to bring in my guest, Elena. Hey, Elena, how are you? I am really good. Thank you, uh, Bola. Very, very nice to be here with you and uh, excited for this conversation today. Same here. I'm excited. So uh, I know my audience, they would like to know you, what you've been doing. Uh, They want to know what they can learn from you. So if you don't mind, can you please introduce yourself to my audience? Of course, Um, I am a career coach and uh, organizational coach, and uh, I've been doing this on my own um, and having my own business uh, for the last three years. And prior to that, I worked as a career coach um, at uh, the business school here uh, in Vancouver at the University of British Columbia. And um, during that time, I had the privilege, I would say, and the fun uh, to work with hundreds of graduate and undergraduate students, um, really helping them with their professional development and um, uh, getting ready for um, getting a job after graduation. And so I would say that for me, those were really important formative years uh, for my career, because, of course, I learned a lot about career development and um, and how to really help people uh, get ready uh, for employment. And also uh, to explore options, to explore uh, what makes them um, come alive, I like to say, and uh, what their strengths are and how they can leverage those strengths into something that can uh, really make them happy in their career. Okay. Now, I I like the way you put it, uh, what makes them come alive. And that's what I always encourage people to also do. Find something that you are passionate about and also that will uh, help you to make money. Uh, I have a lot of listeners, especially here in the U.S., that are currently uh, in the, you know, looking for other options. I, I call them, they are looking for career transitions. Mm. Uh, and I, I'm sure you've you must have dealt with people in this uh, situation uh, in your career. Do you mind uh, maybe sharing with us some of the common challenges that you've heard people, uh, people in career transition, what are those challenges that they face? And if you don't mind, also tell us how they can overcome those challenges. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say as a professional myself, I have experienced lots of transitions in my career. I should say um, probably from my name and also uh, an accent that I have, I came from Italy um, 15 years ago and um, moved to Canada. And so that was a big transition for me. But even prior to that, I used to work as a recruiter in a big 
um, Fortune 500 um, consulting company. And uh, after working there for three years, I decided that I wanted to explore something else. And so I moved into training and development. And um, and then when I was in Canada, I, at some point I was laid off and um, um, I had to, again, come to terms that I needed to make some changes and find uh, something else that could fulfill me in my career. So anyway, so just to say, not that I want to talk about myself, um, but I myself went through a lot of transitions. And I think that uh, the, the common challenges that people experience um, during these transitions is that um, they feel lost. And um, usually when um, there's this um, desire to maybe make some changes, of course, there's a lots of emotions uh, involved. Mm -hmm. And uh, with that, uh, um, some fear about uh, failing or maybe choosing something that is not right. Um, especially if there were some um, maybe poor choices um, or choices that did not go as expected in the past, the people are often very um, afraid of making um, that like a bad choice. Again, I have conversations about this all the time. Um, also, uh, when it comes to uh, understanding uh, maybe different industries or uh, different roles that they could um, they could consider uh, usually people go on job boards and they look what's posted and uh, then uh, they find that for example for the roles that they would like uh, they are not qualified uh, because there's always something they're missing maybe some experience maybe some education and so they get frustrated because they realize that what's out there is not matching their abilities and experiences mm -hmm. so uh, with that there is usually some frustration um, and also sometimes there that brings to not feeling confident that they can make uh, that change right mm -hmm. and so I think that my suggestion goes back to the first thing is starting from yourself ask yourself, what are some of the things that you enjoy doing? Even if you are in a role, in a, in a career that you don't like anymore, um, I'm pretty sure that you can find some activities, uh, some responsibilities that you have that you still enjoy quite a bit. What is it? Maybe is it, it, it is working with people and helping people find solutions. Maybe it's analyzing some data in order to make some recommendations to make important business decisions and so on. So what is it? So it's important that uh, people understand what are the elements that they need to have in their career. And also, uh, what are some factors that are really important to them that can also uh, give them the lifestyle that they want to have. Uh, so maybe they need uh, security uh, because maybe they have a family that they need to provide for, um, or maybe they need, need flexibility because maybe uh, they need to provide for their kids and uh, they need to have that flexibility in order to spend time with their kids or like other family members. Um, so what are those criteria that are important to you um, that you really want to have in your next uh, career? And then finally, I always suggest that people do some research uh, about the job market and potentially opportunities that are out there. I often find that uh, when I work with people, people uh, think, okay, now there's um, like a contraction in the job market and there's not very many opportunities. There's always this scarcity in thinking that there's always uh, something that is not going to let us find the job that could be good for us. And so I always suggest to go out there and start talking to people, uh, tap into your existing network. And even if you are talking to people that are not in your line of work, 
ask questions about what they do and how they found their job. And uh, maybe they will have some ideas that will provide you with some um, things to think about or places to look um, to, into that would give you some inspiration. Uh, maybe they will introduce you to somebody else that you could talk to. So I think that reaching out to your network and trying to expand your network will give you the opportunity to start exploring and maybe getting some new ideas and resources that can help you in this transition process. Oh, that's good. Uh, you you point out several things, uh, but the the basics is here that people should start uh, with what they like, uh, what they are passionate about. They should have set of criteria in terms of what they are looking for in their next role as they are preparing for this transition. You also touch on research. Uh, they should know the industry and. More importantly, I think you mentioned network because I, I really think that's its core in terms of people, uh, you know, getting their next role. They need to talk to uh, people in their network and uh, see how they can help them so that they can land their next role. So that's very, very good, uh, Helena. Thanks for sharing that. Now, I know that uh, in terms of this career transition, uh, maybe... One of the core things is how can people represent themselves? And I know career transitions can come in various forms. Uh, you talked about maybe people getting laid off. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe for women, maybe after taking some time to raise kids, uh, especially uh, maybe they need to get back. Or maybe for immigrants uh, moving from one country to another, uh, they may also be in career transition. Now, I, I want to hear from you. How can they address that uh, transition or if they are looking for to move to a new industry using their resume? What do they need to know about as they build out their resume to look for their next role? Yeah, so I think um, what I'm hearing from your question is a couple of things. One is potentially the resume gap or career gap that they may have um, when, um, for example, uh, somebody is raising kids and so getting out of the workforce or moving uh, from one city to another, one state or country to another. So and that is, I would say, physiological. And if people are worried about how to talk about those transitions, I would say that um, employers consider those um, very um, natural and part of someone's career. Um, so I would say that it's important to talk about that transition as part of your um journey. Uh, it's really a journey and uh, it's important that the story that you have uh, about uh, that transition. So for example, for a mom, um, yes, maybe they spent um, one, two years um, or sometimes even more uh, because maybe they decided to spend uh, more time raising their kids. And so if they decide to go back to, uh, to work, um, of course, they can talk about their experience and uh, all the skills that they needed to hone uh, in order to raise a family. Um, I also have experience with some um, women that um, uh, took time to, for example, care for other relatives uh, um, that were maybe experiencing health conditions um, that, for example, uh, during that time, I'm thinking about a client specifically, um, she had to uh, interact a lot with healthcare practitioners and uh, um, she had to organize uh, uh, lots of different things in order to take care of the house, um, her um, sick dad, and so on. And so she learned a lot of different skills, uh, not only from a logistics perspective, but also because she had to communicate with different healthcare practitioners. She literally learned a new language, and she was able to pick up uh, a lot of things that were uh, unknown to her 
uh, before. And that uh, also gave her a, um, a new perspective and a new understanding that she was actually interested in working in that industry. And then she was able to transition into that industry also because of her experience interacting with physicians and healthcare professionals. So it was for her, um, not only a life experience, but also uh, an opportunity to explore another industry that she had never considered before well, that's, um, yeah yeah and um i think um the uh the other part of transitioning into a an industry that um for example you don't have experience in um it, it really depends. Uh, I think that um, if you are a professional with lots of years of experience in one industry and uh, you want to move into another industry, you need to be realistic, in my opinion. And so um, you want to take into consideration, yes, your transferable skills and highlight those in your resume. Um, at the same time, when I say that you need to be realistic, uh, I, I mean that there will be other professionals uh, with the same years of experience and seniority in the same industry. And so you will compete with those people. And so for recruiters and hiring managers, uh, it will be easier to look at those professionals with years of experience in the direct um, industry rather than uh, people that do not have direct experience. So how can you do that? I think that you can be strategic. And so you may consider um, a transition to either lateral rules or uh, maybe take a step back. Um, and so start from a, I'm not saying entry level position, because of course, if you are a senior uh, manager or senior professional, you can't really start from uh, an entry level position. But considering a uh, step back um, might be strategic in order to uh, get into the industry that you are uh, interested in, in order to gain experience and most importantly, credibility, uh, build up your reputation, and then uh, make the move that will get you back into uh, the level that you uh, that you were before. Oh, that's good. Thank you very much for sharing that. You touched on networking, the importance of networking uh, for career uh, transitions or people looking for new uh, jobs. I want to hear uh, what tips can you provide uh, for people so that they can build um, a strong network of professionals uh, around them such that when they need that help, they will have people they can call on uh, so that they can uh, land their next role. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, uh, some people talk about networking as your net worth, uh, meaning that it's really important um, who you know uh, in order to um, to really um, progress uh, as a person and as a profession professional. Um, I say as a person because uh, when you, for example, have a mentor, uh, you get a lot out of that relationship because you learn from them and uh, they share with you uh, the experience and the resources that you will need in order to grow as a person and as a professional. Um, so for that reason, I say uh, your networking is really your net worth. At the same time, I know that networking uh, can have a bad rap. Um, and a lot of people, when um, they hear about the fact that we should all network um, in order to grow in our profession and to um, also uh, to develop our careers, um, they are not um, so much into it uh, because they think that networking is schmoozing. And uh, so I would like to say that networking is really building relationships. Uh, and uh, 
in my opinion, you build relationships the way you want to do that. In other words, you want to be authentic um, and do it in a way that feels authentic to you. So um, when people say, oh, you should network and you should go to networking events or you should go and meet people, I always say, do it the way you feel like it. Um, and so, for example, if I think about myself, I can go to networking events to meet people. But is it really my preferred way? Not really. I really like to connect one on one with people. And so my way to connect is usually um, on a coffee chat uh, or going out for lunch with someone, um, just having meaningful conversation with people. And when we think about networking also, it's not just give and take. Sometimes it's just an opportunity to share, to um, develop a relationship and uh, maybe have uh, something in common that you want to share with this person. Um, so many times uh, you will have interactions with people and you will think that it's not really leading anywhere, but the relationship is there. And if you cultivate it, no matter what, it will benefit you um, in the long term. You never know. And so I always say network authentically, um, almost like not expecting that that person or that interaction will give you something in return. Always do it in a way as if you are planting a seed and uh, you will wait. One day it will flourish. Uh, it will give you something back. But do it in a way that... Uh, in in the in the moment gives you the opportunity to really connect with the person and to make feel like the other person welcomed and connected to you oh that is so good so uh networking is about building a relationship and we must do it as our authentic self so we shouldn't be scripted or trying to be who we are not so thank you helena for sharing that now i know you work with a lot of uh, job seekers job candidates uh, to coach them can you touch on how you help people uh, is it about helping them to find a job or helping them to grow on their job uh, maybe teaching them strategies how to get promotion or and all those great things that will help them to position themselves for career groups. So how do you work with your uh, customers or your students? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I usually work with um, two types of professionals. So usually I work with mid professionals um, that are really ambitious and uh, they really want uh, to have um, something better in their career. Um, I define myself a feisty Italian, and uh, I really like to work with people that have that feistiness uh, in, in them. Uh -huh. And, um, and uh, so I, I usually work with people that either um, find themselves lost, as I said at the beginning. So they are at a fork of their career. They might have worked in one industry uh, or maybe have had um, a few jobs, uh, but they're feeling that something is missing and they want to find something that is more meaningful and more aligned to what they really want. Um, and uh, so I work with them uh, to explore uh, what that could look like. The goal is to give them clarity around what it is that they would like to do. Um, and then I help them with the more tactical strategies. So um, on top of being a coach, uh, I am also a career strategist that helps them um, define their personal branding and um, um, embed it into their resume and cover letter and so on and then prepare for interviews. Um, but I also work with uh, professionals who are um, in a job and uh, let's say that uh, they are relatively happy, but at the same time, they feel that they're not sure how to advance in their career, how to grow. 
Um, and uh, what they need is not just mentorship, but someone who can um, give them different perspective and uh, feedback sometimes, and also um, really co-create with them um, the um, solutions or potentially a uh, way forward. Um, so for example, I've been working with a uh, professional in the tech industry that um, was um, got a new job and uh, he really wanted to make sure that he would establish himself really solidly in the new organization. Um, he wanted to develop a good, strong relationship with his manager. So we talked a lot about how to manage up, how to advocate for himself within the organization, how to really position himself as a um, an expert in what he was doing. But also we had a lot of conversations around how do I navigate my way towards a promotion within uh, 12 months? I know that I want to get promoted, but I don't know how to have those conversations and most importantly, how I can get there. So uh, we had a lot of uh, coaching sessions to really strategize, but really give them, give him uh, the opportunity to understand from his own perspective and resources that he has, um, like what can he do in order to position himself um, really strongly for that promotion. No, that's, so those, yeah. yeah, so those are the people that usually um, I work with and how I help them and uh, the goals that we achieve together. Oh, that's good. So uh, I know maybe some of my listeners here, they may want to connect with you and see how you can also help them. A lot of them, they are also uh, in that uh, situation or position where they, they want more, they want to grow mm -hmm. Career, but they do not know how to position themselves for the next promotion. And uh, they may want to connect with you. So, where can they find you? Yeah, they definitely can find me on LinkedIn. Okay. Um, and uh, my handle is uh, on LinkedIn, Elena Giorgetti Coaching. Um, they can also find me on Instagram. Um, I have a uh, an account that is called Impact Career Coach. And uh, um, yeah, I think, and of course, my website, impactcareercoach.ca, uh, um, and uh, they can find me there and they can find uh, um, also some, uh, some other uh, episodes that I had on other podcasts and uh, a webinar on mastering your uh, interview skills. Awesome. So as we are uh, bringing this to a close, Helena, I want you to, I love to motivate people. I want you to leave a message for my listeners to tell them that, hey, no matter what your situation may be career-wise today, uh, maybe if they stay focused, if they keep showing up, if they don't give up, they are going to get to that career um, level that they desire. And, you know, you, you again, you spoke about something that will bring the, out the light in them. Uh, maybe you can share one or two things that will help them to connect, to get to that uh, other side where they continue to thrive. I I usually say that um, your career is really a journey. I really like to travel. So I think that I like this metaphor quite a bit. And um, I think that um, any stop on the journey, so every role every job that people have will teach uh, them something uh, even if it's not the best experience but there will always be something to learn and uh, each experience is a step forward in that journey and so really approaching your career with that mindset I think gives you the opportunity to savor the journey and to really appreciate uh, um, everything that happens in the in the good and the bad and uh, I think by having that optimistic uh, and more um, you know uh, grateful mindset really helps you find the way. Oh, that's good. Thank you very much for sharing with us here today. Helena, we appreciate your time. 
Uh, this is so good. Uh, and I'm sure my listeners, they will find it very, very beneficial. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me today, Bola.